Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we have the brand new Tier 8 Premium Aircraft Carrier Hornet import to review for you guys today. Before we get going with the review though, I just want to give a huge shout out to the channel's Patreons. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am not affiliated nor supported by Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. So, all these ship reviews I either have to purchase with funds from the channel or funds from the generous Patreons whose name should be up on screen at this moment. So again, a huge shout out to you guys, and thank you guys for making this review possible. Alright, so the Hornet Tier 8 Premium U.S. Aircraft Carrier, real still historical ship here. Of course, the ship the Doolittle Raid was launched from. And as you can see, she does, in fact, have her B-25s on deck. I'm so glad they managed to get that in the game and somehow get that to work. How good is it? We'll see here in a moment. So, yes, we have two of the Yorktown class carriers in-game with the Enterprise and the Hornet now. And hopefully the Yorktown, which was announced alongside the Hornet, will eventually make it into the game in some way, shape, or form, so we can have all three of the Yorktown sisters in-game. That'd be very, very cool. I just gotta say, too, art department is always knocking it out of the park here. The model looks very good. I assume it's just the Enterprise's whole model, but there are some clear upgrades. The Enterprise is quite a an old ship in the game now, but the model, the model looks great. So again, as always, hats off to the art department. Beautiful, beautiful model here. And I don't know, I haven't checked yet, but they do have a pretty cool uh, alternate permanent camo for the Hornet. Is that... Yeah, there. So if you want to buy this camo, which I think looks very nice, I like the color combination, you can buy that. There's another 5,000 dubs, though. Um... On top of a ship that's already 12,300 doubloons is a pretty steep asking price, but the camo does look nice in my opinion. I might consider picking it up later. Alright. But anyway, this is the perma camo that she comes with. You, of course, if you do have, I think it's Halsey's mission done, uh, you do have a couple of choices of alternative camos here for it. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the ship, her characteristics and stats. Then I'm going to take her into battle for some time, and I'll join you back in a voiceover review talking about my first impressions of her. But for now, let's go ahead and go over her characteristics and stats. Armor layout, again, you know, the ship isn't as important here. The planes are really what you're going to be using 90% of the time. But the flight deck is 25 millimeters of armor. Bow is 19. Side is 40. Uh, Stirred is 19 as well. You have some other... Hanger plating up here that's 19, so that's 38, and there's the hangers 19, and her citadel is just a little bit above the waterline, and I do believe it's covered by the torpedo protection, 102 millimeter plating there, and yeah, not much else. Alright, so no surprises there, it's going to be pretty similar to the Enterprise. So our ability, she has 50,000 hit points with 28% torpedo damage reduction. And of course, her aircraft, she has some Douglas TBDs with two attacking flights. That I do believe the way this works is that there's fairly large attack flights in each flight, but you only get two of them. So for example, with the uh, torpedo bombers here, you get eight planes per squadron, but four planes per attacking flight. So you attack with four planes at once and the torpedoes are the mark sevens you get one torpedo per, t per plane they do a maximum of 4667 damage they travel at 35 knots they have a three kilometer range they have a 344 meter arming distance so with uh four planes all together you'll be doing a little bit over 20,000 ish dam you know maximum damage per run if they all connect and if they all do their maximum damage which of course won't happen so realistically i would expect to be expected about 14 to 16 thousand per per run if you get all four on target and the planes are very slow 112 cruising speed 147 knocks maximum speed the engine boost is active for 20 seconds and they regenerate uh in 62 seconds that's actually pretty good all right and then you got the douglas sbds 
Two attacking flights here and five planes per attacking flight, ten planes per flight. So that's a lot of bombs. And they are AP bombs. Ooh, interesting. So one bomb per plane. So five bombs with a 3,600 maximum bomb damage. So that, ooh, God. That, again, around a little over 20,000 potential maximum AP damage. Um, of course, that's not going to happen all at once. Well, who knows? It might, maybe. Maybe every now and then you might just absolutely obliterate some poor tier 8 battleship for uh, for 20,000. Good God. Um, but I, I wouldn't expect that to happen. The reticle is probably pretty wonky. But again, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So 122, 122 knots maximum uh, speed. 157 knots maximum speed. Engine boost for 20 seconds. The engine boost reloads in 40 seconds. Again, 5 planes per attacking flight. 10 planes per squadron. 20 planes on deck. And one unit every 62 seconds is the regeneration rate, which is, again, pretty good. Alright, then, of course, we have the B-25s. These are essentially level bombers. So they have a hit point pool of 4,890. Um, cruising speed 105 knots. Max speed 140 knots. They have an engine boost 20 seconds. Engine boost reloads in 40 seconds. Six planes per, per flight, and they all attack at once, so it's all six. Um, and... From my understanding, this should work like the... Ooh, this is interesting. Um, let me see. I want to double check, because it, supposedly it works like the Kearsarge and the... Yeah, it works like the Kearsarge and the... Yeah, and the, um, the Issei, where you have to wait two minutes for the planes to become available. You can lose all six of them, but then two minutes they become available again, so it doesn't really matter how much you lose of, of these aircraft you're always going to have six of them available in two minutes and that's what that's what it's supposed to look it's supposed to uh, uh, that's how it's supposed to work but we'll see english is hard today oh i am still sick by the way if you can't tell so i sound a little funny and i get some stuff a little screwy i, I am like a, on like a lot of allergy medicine so i do apologize for that all right so you get four bombs per payload max of bomb damage is 7300 these are he bombs they can bend 42 millimeters of armor and they have a 41% chance of causing a fire on the target. Alright. So, again, very glad they added in the B-25s. Let's see how they work. Now, the A Defense, she only has an A rating of 62 compared to the Enterprise, who has an A rating in the 86 range. I do believe the Hornet is, of course, the earlier variant of the Yorktown class during the war. Because, of course, she has B-25s and that raid happened very early in the Pacific War, so that does make sense. Maneuver builds you at max speed of 32.5 knots, which is good. A turret circle race of 1,060 meters, and a shift time of 12.3 seconds. And in terms of concealment, she's concealed from 13.8 kilometers base. Alright. And for her modules and her equipment, you have fighter and damage count, of course. It's on auto, so the AI will take care of that. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and slap a module and commander build on her, and I'll meet you guys right back here after that. Alrighty, so what I did here was essentially do the same build I did on Enterprise, where I built into the torpedo bombers. Especially so considering that you have AP dive bombers, which a lot of time it's um, kind of like a slot machine. It's really down to how do the bombs fall, how does RNG treat you. So most of your consistent damage is going to be coming from the torpedo bombers. Especially so since the B-25s are only available every two minutes and it's only one squadron every two minutes. So you're going to be using a lot of the torpedo bombers and leaning on them for your damage. At least that's what I'm, think is going to ha that's what I'm thinking is going to happen here. So that's why I went with this build. So I went with, for the modules at least, Air Groups Mod 1 to get the planes back to the carrier faster. That increases our cycle rate. Aircraft engines are mod 1 because that gives you a longer engine boost and these are slow planes and we're going to be using that a lot because it's either that or damage con and carriers don't really care about fires, ironically. That's what killed carriers a lot during World War II, but in this game, it's a mild inconvenience. Then I went with aerial torpedoes mod 1 to get the torpedo speed up because these are slow torpedoes. Uh, they went like 35 knots beforehand. There's a lot of ships you can see that can outrun those. So, a bit, bit more speed is what we want. Then I went with Torpedo Bombers Mod 2 that gives the Torpedo Bombers a little bit more health. Then with Flight Control Mod 1 which in increases the aircraft preparation time and increases the amount of slots available on the deck. And for the Commander build, I'm using Halsey. Very appropriate. 
although he was on Enterprise, but you guys get what I'm saying. So with air supremacy, which further decreases the prep time of the planes, then I went with improved engines, which increases the speed of the squadron. Again, these are slow planes. We want them to be going a little bit faster. Then swift fish for another 5% to the torpedo speed. Then torpedo bomber, which is a very bland name for this skill, <laughs> which gives the torpedoes less arming distance, so we can drop them a little bit closer if need be. Then I went with sight stabiliz stabilization to give the aiming speed a bit of a buff to the aircraft, which is very nice. Then I went with aircraft armor, which reduces the amount of damage that they take from the F AA. Then I went with enhanced aircraft armor, which reduces the amount of damage they take from AA shell explosions. And then proximity fuse to give us that anti-torpedo protection damage negation. So, yeah. Building to the torpedo bombers here pretty pretty excessively. Hopefully that'll give us a nice, good, consistent source of damage income. So now the torpedo bombers have 1,838 hit points. They now travel at 115 knots. Base speed, maximum speed at 151 knots. They have an engine boost time of 22 seconds, and they are ready in 56 seconds, which is very nice. Um, the dive bombers, they too are now available in 56 seconds. They travel at 125 knots, map speed 161 knots now. The B-25s travel at 108 knots. They are um, boosting at 143 knots. And their preparation time is now down to 162 seconds. So yeah, that's interesting. So I'm going to go ahead now and head into battle. Again, I'm not the best carrier player in the world, but we'll see how this goes here with the Hornet. So I'll meet you guys there for a voiceover re review. Alright guys, voiceover Mountain Batten here, still congested. Uh, approximately two hours later, I have two hours of Hornet matches recorded on my hard drive right now, and boy, um, except for this one and one or two others, they're all terrible. Now, of course, I, I am not a very good CV player at all. I've come a long way since I first picked up CVs after the CV rework, but I'm far from being an actual good CV player. I would say I'm probably average in most CVs, the only one I'm actually good in is Graf Zeppelin, because that ship's so stupid and Mimi, I've played God knows how many hundreds of hundreds of matches in it. I actually have above average stats in it. But the Hornet, so the best way I can describe the Hornet, it's like you go to a car meet and you see this Mustang. It's got the GT badges on it, it's got all the trim pieces, the bumpers, the lights, all the things indicating it's a Mustang GT. But then you open up the hood, and it's a four-cylinder EcoBoost. So, that's what the Hornet's like, because you see it, it looks like the Enterprise, it's the same class, and you think, oh, it's the Enterprise, except, you know, it doesn't have the rocket planes anymore, they traded that out for the B-25s, and they've messed with the squadrons a little bit, but it should be like the Enterprise, right? No, it's, it's, it's not. It is not at all. So... You have one squadron that you can depend upon, and that is your torpedo bombers. The torpedo bombers are good, and I really like what they've done here with the squadrons. It's kind of a mix of the Soviet CV all at once, uh, squadron mechanics, and still a little bit of, of course, uh, American. So the, the torpedo bombers are very reliable. You get four planes in an attacking squadron, eight planes all in all. And like I said in the port section, true enough, if you get all four of those planes on target and they all hit you will be doing about 16,000 damage a run that is of course if your planes don't get shot down if you don't miss more than likely it's going to be around the 10,000 range and in the matchmaking I had when I was constantly being shoved in the face of a bunch of tier 10 CV um, not CV uh, tier 10 a boats um, that didn't happen. In most cases, I was getting like three through, actually. That's using the heal and using that uh, squadron number two as a sacrificial squadron. That's another thing, too. You can't do the normal conserve plane strategy where, like in most of the other CVs, you have three or four or five squadrons. You can you know, drop one of them early, send them back to the carrier so you can start to conserve planes. You can't really do that, but that's not really a problem in Hornet because of the very low regeneration rate of the... well, very high regeneration rate, very low regeneration time 
of the planes, the build that I have on it again, it's like 52 seconds. And um, getting on to the next point about these planes, they're so freaking slow that you normally won't run out of planes. Even when I had this one match, when it, I think the, the cruisers on the enemy team was a Minotaur, a Smolensk, then they had a Ragnar, and a Smallend, and a Gearing, and then the ships were a Jean Bar, and an Iowa, and a Missouri. So yeah, just an absolute stacked AA team. I didn't run out of planes, but I sure as hell couldn't do a whole lot, because I couldn't really get through the AA. So, the Torpedo Squadron, them, them are your boys. Them's your boys. They are the ones you can count on. They can do damage. The other two squadrons... <sighs> The B-25s, okay, when they are up and they are usable, they are good. They are very good. Now, they're slow, of course, they're B-25s, they're medium bombers. They turn like a brick, again, they're medium bombers, but they also hit like an F-250, too. What's really neat about them is that their reticle is a circle, so you can approach a ship from just about any angle, the front, the side diagonally it doesn't really matter as long as you get that middle cross on the center part of the ship and you will chunk them for in my experience like 16k and start a couple of fires go after the ships that have big superstructures american battleships french battleships especially french battleships too german battleships you'll chunk their superstructure for like 16k and you'll set two fires and they're wonderful for that but they're only available every um if you ha if you have it spec'd they will, da, 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 let me pull it up here on the menu, they'll be available every 162 seconds, so a little under two minutes. Which, again, with how slow your other planes are, you do one run in the torpedo bombers and they're already almost, <laughs> almost available. So, yeah, they're nice, but again, they're only available every 162 seconds. They are slow, they don't get any heal, they don't get any fighters, though, so you can't, you know, call on a fighter or anything while you're using them. They do get the engine boost, and the um, engine boost does charge back up. They also get the consumable that, of course, extends that for however long it does, so that's nice as well. But again, they're only available for two minutes. So you got one squadron, you can really rely on the torpedo bombers. You got one that's good when it's available, and of course, too, you can lose all six of the B-25s, doesn't matter. Two minutes, they're back up. Then we get to the AP bombers. These guys are garbage. They are terrible, terrible, terrible. Now, on paper, they sound pretty good. They do have really good pins. But their arming threshold is really, really, really large as well. So what ends up happening is that 90% of the time, you're going to overpin the ship. Because the bomb's going to go all the way through the, the ship and explode underwater. And they don't have enough pin to get through superstructure. So you either pin the superstructure or overpin the ship. Unless you run to a ship that's, of course, notoriously easy to... Citadel with AP dive bombers, so German battleships, um, I think the American heavy cruisers are as well. Um, I did Citadel Congress pretty readily when I was playing the Hornet. Other than that, they're useless. And even when you do Citadel, the, the bombs are tiny. Tiny, tiny. It's a tiny, tiny bomb. It only does 3,600 damage. So, when you do bomb them, you get like 1, 2 Citadels, it's only 6,000 damage. It, it is Citadel damage, don't get me wrong, so that that is nice. But it's just, yeah. What I recommend if you do pick up the ship, which obviously I don't recommend you pick up the ship, unfortunately. Um, these are the planes that you send when you don't really know where that Minotaur is at. And you want to go find it? Because you can lose these guys and you're, you're fine. You don't want to use these planes anyway. So they're the sacrificial lands for scouting or flying over a DD. These are the planes you can afford to lose because they don't really do too much. Oh, and if you can't tell, too, they don't actually dive bomb. They carpet bomb or glide bomb, I think, is the technical term for what they're doing here. So, yeah. You, you, yeah. It's it's not good. They don't approach well. The bombs will do a lot of damage. They're going to overpin a lot. And there's only really a handful of ships you can actually get good, consistent hits on with them. And if those ships aren't in-game, then these bombers are pretty much useless. So you really want to be bouncing back between the... What I tried to do, at least, was the torpedo bombers. And then if like there was like 10 seconds left on the B-25s, I'd wait the 10 seconds and launch them. I would only use the AP bombers when I really needed to. Overall, I'd give the Hornet a 5 out of 10. It's 
pros being the torpedo squadrons are a source of good consistent damage and they attack in very large waves and if you do manage to get all of your torpedoes on target you will be chunking ships for quite a lot the b25 is also a very powerful resource with very powerful he bombs they have a nice reticle and it is the hornet's a very neat historical ship and i'd like to see that in game it is also a viable american carrier commander trainer of course, a lot of the skills you'll be specking in here with the torpedoes will be carried over to the American Carrier Line. Although, of course, you may have to respect some here and there for the usable dive bombers of the American Carrier Line as well. The downsides being the planes are horrendously slow. The planes don't have a lot of health. The AP dive bombers, well, not even dive bombers, the AP bombers are completely horrendous like I just mentioned they don't they're not dive bombers they carpet bomb or glide bomb they have very very minuscule damage they have insane armor threshold and uh, arming time so you're going to overpin most targets and the b25s are only available every three minutes base two minutes and 42 seconds with the build on it and all around it's just god i i wish it was better i really do carriers don't get a lot of love in this game obviously but if there's a carrier that was going to be you know accepted by a large chunk of the player base especially the north american player base it would be the hornet and she's really subpar now i know some players might rejoice at this because oh it's a carrier that's not insanely overpowered yeah it's true it's not overpowered uh consider this too i only ran across none when i was playing normally the morning of patch day well morning of the day after patch day which is new, normally like a thursday or friday which is ten, tends to be the days when the uh, new premiums get released uh the new premium is normally everywhere but um i didn't run across any and the way match is supposed to work it's supposed to try to get your exact ship on the other side so tier 8 american premium aircraft carrier it should be another tier 8 american premium aircraft carrier which would be the enterprise of the hornet i didn't run across either now, of course the enterprise is very rare but the hornet just released so you would think she'd be out in droves today but she was not at least when i was playing which is typically fairly early we're on spring break right now so i'm playing earlier than i normally do but hey that might be an indicator of something one way or another. But yeah, guys, pass on this one. If you do get her in a Christmas container or in a random container, I do think she's an alright ship if you get used to playing it. But it's it's a steep learning curve, and the majority of you guys that are interested in, in carriers probably will pass on her anyway. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about the horn in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. One way to 35,000 subs. I cannot thank you guys enough for that. We're getting very close to our goal. We just passed uh, 34,500 a few days ago, so that's awesome. And like I mentioned earlier, well, in yesterday's video, I will be doing another giveaway once we get to 35,000 subs, so stick around for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your Easter's if you celebrate that. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.